Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. As you know, I do quite a lot of 3D printing in my channel. I build some quite big projects with 3D printed structures, and I also print quite a lot of NinjaFlex, which is a rubber-like flexible material that can be 3D printed. Have a look at my alien Xenomorph suit to see some hybrid prints printed with dual extruders in ABS and NinjaFlex. And also I've used quite a lot of rubber 3D printed drive belts in NinjaFlex and wheels with tires on in my R6 droid and my BB-8 projects. So I've got a Lulzbot Mini here, and Lulzbot have sent me their Flexi Struder version 2, which is an upgrade for the Mini, specifically to print NinjaFlex. So we're going to fit that today and see how it works. Let's see what's in the box. So first of all, we've got um, a card stating congratulations and telling you all about the tool head. You'll notice there's a URL on here for ohai.lulzbot.com. Um, and that stands for Open Hardware Assembly Instructions, and we'll have a look at that shortly. So they've documented how to build every printer. And of course, all their printers and parts are open source, so there are complete assembly guides at that URL for everything that's ever been made. So in here, we've got a bag with, uh, looks like some NinjaFlex filament, some zip ties, a couple of Allen keys, and also a glue stick, which is quite important. So these printers ship with a PEI bed, which is incredibly good for rigid materials. It sticks when it's hot and releases really easily when it's cold. But NinjaFlex sticks really, really well to these. So the glue is in fact to make a weaker bond so the NinjaFlex can be removed from the bed. And of course, we've got the tool head itself, which is fairly well wrapped up. There we go, so that is the Flexi Struder tool head, which takes a more direct path through the extruder block for NinjaFlex, so it doesn't kink up in the extruder. Of course, that's got the Lulzbot hexagon all metal hot end on, so that's the connector there, which is nicely protected. And on the back, you'll notice there's a sticker, which has been uh, placed there at the factory that says E Steps 909. So we need to make a note of that number because that's quite important when we come to configure the hot end. Here we are at ohai.lulzbot.com and this is the complete set of instructions for pretty much every product. So for instance, if we go into TAS5, we can look at uh, how to assemble the TAS5 X-End idler assembly. It tells you exactly what to do, what tools you'll need, which parts. Most of these parts are 3D printed, so you can in fact download all of these and make your own printer. And it's got everything step by step. Um, so this is really quite exciting. We've got um, all of the accessories and all of the printers, including the Mini, including pretty much every generation of the Taz. So let's go to accessories. Um, we've got all of the different dual extruders, the uh, flexi extruders for different models, and everything else. So let's go to the flexi extruder version 2 for the Lulzbot Mini. And of course, as you'd expect, you've got full step-by-step -step instructions, what's in the box, what you'll need, a laptop and so on, and the printer, of course. Um, and then it goes into detail of how to change the hot end and the extruder. Um, lots and lots of steps here. So I'm going to work through this guide, and we're going to actually do this now. The first step is to remove the cover here, which exposes the connector for the hot end. So it comes with the correct Allen key to undo these two bolts, and I've already undone them a bit. So let's just finish that off and remove this cover. So there's the connector, which obviously connects everything for the hot end, its fans and everything else. So that should just pull out. There we go, and we've got a very similar connector to the new hot end. Now that cable is held on with two cable ties you can see here, so we need to cut those. The instructions say to use scissors, I'm going to use cutters. Obviously be careful not to cut the belt or anything else, so we'll just snip those two. There we go, so those should pull off neatly. And obviously we have replacements in the box to put those back, so now this cable is free to be removed. To physically remove the tool head, we need to undo three more Allen screws, which are here, here, and here. And again, the tool is supplied for that, so I'm just going to undo those. And as I undo the last one, the tool head, in fact, just comes away. So that is the standard extruder, which of course comes with the all-metal hot ends, and a normal extruder with the idler. Now it's time to fit the new tool head, and of course we just need to reverse that by screwing it back on, plugging the cable in, putting the top back on, and putting the two zip ties back. 
So let's just find that first one. There we go. And we'll screw that in there. Now we can plug that connector back together and replace the zip ties. Pull those nice and tight, make sure they go around the bit of conduit and hold all the wires out of the way. And we can just snip the ends off with the cutters again. Now it's time to replace that top cover. It's got a groove in that the connector fits in, so it's a bit of a wiggle to put it back on. But you should find that it should seat down quite nicely and the screw holes should align. My new tool head is now fitted and the next part we need to do in Lowell's Boss edition of Cura. We're back to the open hardware assembly instructions which also have the software set up. So what we need here is Lowell's Bot edition of Cura and it's got the link there to download it if you haven't got it already with your mini and that takes you to this page. There's versions there for Linux, Windows and Mac so in my case I'm going to click on the Windows one and it's got the link for downloading the latest version and also full install instructions. So as it is I already have Cure installed and it looks like this but if we continue to look at the open hardware assembly guide we can see there's various things we need to do. So we need to select the Lulzbot Mini, look at the machine settings, there's a tab here for changing the tool head and selecting it and also entering the e-stops value. So I'm just going to quickly do that. I've already got uh, the machine selected as the Mini. Let's look at machine settings. Yes, there it is. Change the tool head with a flexi extruder. Okay. And then we need to go back here and put in 909, which was the value written on that extruder, which is calibrated at the factory. And if I click OK, that should be it. And now we've got the option here for material for Ninja Flex and Semi Flex, which are the two Fenner Drive flexible products. I now have my laptop here and I've got the USB cable plugged into the printer and the printer is powered on. So the first thing I need to do is put some of that Ninja Flex filament in. So if I go and click on Control in Cura, we should be able to just heat up that hot end and get some filament in there. So let's just heat that up to 230. Click on Set. And hopefully we should see the temperature rising shortly. It's up to temperature, so now we can just wind that filament out. You can reverse it out in Cura. I prefer just to turn this and interestingly you'll see two marks on this piece of Ninja Flex and that's how they've calibrated the E-steps. So let's just wind that out. There we go. And we're just going to use the sample that came with it. Uh, this is Lulzbot Green which has been colour matched by Fenner Drives. You can of course um, get other colours. And we'll just wind that on until we get some coming through. There we go, so we can purge out that clear until the green comes through. There it is. Before printing we mustn't forget the glue stick, so we just need to spread a light coat of glue on the bed there where we're going to print the part. And as I say that helps it stick less, so we can actually remove the part. Now it's time for our first Ninja Flex print, so I'm just going to print, click on print, and we're going to print the open hardware keychain, which you can see just on the screen. The Lulzbot Mini does auto nozzle cleaning and also bed levelling, so it's just going to wipe its nozzle at the back there on the felt pad. And then it goes and touches each corner so that it can measure the height of the bed and it corrects any issues in software to get a perfectly level print.
It'll then heat up to temperature and it should start the print. And off it goes. So the part is all done, let's take a closer look. It looks pretty good quality, and the hot end comes with a 0.6mm nozzle, and that was the standard quality setting in Cura. You can go to high quality. Let's just peel that off, it should come away easily enough. Yes, there we are, so... There we go, we can see a few lines on it, which you generally get on 3D prints, but that is a pretty good quality, flexible Ninja Flex print. So I think I'm going to be using this quite a lot. That's the end of this video about fitting that Flexi Struder version 2 to the Lolzbot Mini, but check out my channel for more projects using it and 3D printing in general. Alright, that's all for now.